the name Joe Black came about, well, you know they, why they call him Black. But the officers who have votes cannot get to them in many cases because the roads are flooded to their homes. Then they started calling me Joe all of a sudden. I said, I don't know what they mean, Joe. We ain't gonna call you Joe anyway. I'm like, all right, as long as you come get your hair cut, you call me that. A water main broke, leaving New Orleans without drinking water. And the flooding here is getting worse after waters from Lake Pontchartrain broke through a levee. And anything that he does, because I know that anything John touches, is, it's, it's great. It went from green walls to blue floors to blue walls. Now we got wood floors, platforms, and customized. Ashley Johnson sits down with a New Orleans man who now makes his life as a barber here in Houston. I was determined. If you come to me one time, I promise you, you're going to come back. I am so dedicated to, to barber. And barbering is, is so important in the world. John Black stayed true to his dream of owning his own barber shop. He knows firsthand about perseverance and having faith. Anybody, that's no team like Team Joe Black. No team like Team Joe Black. You can have the best hair color in the world. They're not one of the best barbers in Joe Black Barbers. Black Shop has been a staple here in the Third Ward for eight years. He says while New Orleans will always be home, he plans on keeping his roots right here in Houston. Tell us who you are and what you do. I'm John Brown, known as Joe Black, and I'm a barber here at Joe Black Barbershop. See, John, take one. Uh, barber game started when I was in high school. I actually started cutting hair when I was in the project. I started cutting all my friends hair in the projects, and uh, they started loving me, so they kind of gave me a name. The name Joe Black came about, well, you know they, why they call me Black. But um, then they started calling me Joe all of a sudden. I was like, y'all know my name ain't no Joe. They said, we gonna call you Joe anyway. They just put it together, Joe Black. So I'm like, okay, cool. So that became my nickname, Joe Black. See, Tierney, take one. I'm Tierney Brown, and I do manicure and pedicures inside of Joe Black Barbershop. He took me to the projects, and actually, I didn't even know that he was from the projects. So when we went that way, I was like, where are we going? And uh, he said, well, this is where I've been born and raised. This is where my mom lived and everybody. So he introduced me to the family, and he's been, he's been there and uh, when we were in school as well. So he worked um, in the project, and he went to school, and then he'd leave from cutting at the school and back into the project. I actually went to a barber shop on the, on the Canal Street, and um, I started there a, a, about a week, and I had a lot of my clients that came from the uh, from the project, and when they came in, the barber shop was kind of kind of a calm environment, but my clients coming from the project was a little rowdy. So I wound up staying there for about a week. The owner put me out and said, no, nah, I can't deal with your clients. <laughs> Back to the project I went. But in the in the project, I actually set my mother's living room up like a barber shop. I had the barber chair, the mirror, the lights, the, the music, the AC when it's hot. So everybody was comfortable in the come get their chair haircut in the project because they felt like they was in a barbershop. And I, again, appreciate my mom so much for giving up her living room space for me for that. Let's fast forward. Okay. Uh, Katrina hits, tragedy. Um, tell us about the experience. Tell us uh, from an emotional standpoint where you and John's minds were at that time. Uh, there's uh, one story that there's an officer up on this bridge uh, and his mother is stranded in one of the homes that we can see from here. Oh, put the pumps on! Get the water out of here. Get the water out! But the pumps aren't coming on. There's no electricity. And even if there was, the levees haven't been repaired yet. When they first told us to 
voluntary evacuate, I was in the barber shop. Me and my wife left that Saturday after we got off, because we normally don't leave. And um, we just left there. We just gonna roll out to Texas and stay there for about a weekend till it's over with and then go back. But lo and behold, that didn't happen. Hurricane Katrina hit and here we were stuck in Houston. I was, I was afraid. I leaned more on my husband. We actually were lost because we were riding and riding. We didn't, when we hit the uh, Texas board, we thought that we were actually at our destination, not really realizing how big Texas was. Because before, when the storm happened, after it happened, the next day, it was a beautiful day. Everybody was outside enjoying, she said, Every, everything good. But that night, the water started rising. Uh, we can certainly see what's happened all across the city as we drove around uh, the city of New Orleans. On uh, just about every street you went up or down, there was flood water. So I told my mom, I said, get all your medication and turn your cell phone off. And wherever you go, I'm coming to get you. And it just so happened that my mom and my family got on the bus that brought them here. That was a sight that I never want to see again. My mom was a strong woman. She raised me and my brother by herself in the projects. That's hard to do. And to see my mom with the expression on her face like she was scared, that, that was horrific for me. I never want to see my mom like that again. Never. I'm sorry, y'all. I can't. This is... Oof. Now I'm homeless. You guys had to start over from scratch. Yeah. Shop and everything. Um, how did you guys do that? How did you manage to do that uh, with limited resources? John, he he went out and he went and bought a pair of pants, a pair of khakis, and a shirt, a polo shirt, and some shoes. Some and brown shoes. he um, he went around looking at different barber shops. My mom, she was always a, a pusher. She would always tell me and my brother, because I was raised up with me and my brother, she used to always tell us, if you want something, go get it. Don't ask nobody for nothing. And once I came to Houston, that just, that instinct just kicked in. And John is, he don't depend on nobody. His pride and everything, and as a man, you know, he feels like, I got to do something. So he found a barbershop. Oh man, this, yeah, this was a journey from, from the ground. I came up Martin Luther King and, and saw this building in Safe Elise, and I called the number. The guy said that he'll meet me here at three o'clock. I think it was like noon when I called him. And uh, he met me at three o'clock, opened the door. I saw the walls, the walls were green. Uh, they had some uh, smut on the, on the walls from the, uh, from, the uh, from, from smoke. I looked at the layout and I said, this is me right here, this is me. And at that time, I didn't even, I even know if I can afford the numbers that he was gonna give me. But he gave me the numbers and I was like, okay, I'm gonna make it happen. And uh, we signed the lease in April of 2008, and they've been on ever since. It's just been on. But when I first came, I, I started off on a bucket with in, in a corner with the clip with my tools that I had. He came in and uh, actually he started on a bucket and a lamp and one folding chair. I'm fortunate and I'm blessed yeah. mm -hmm. to have the type of clients I have to follow me and have them sitting on the bucket. My mother-in-law brought my first chair. So, um, I mean, I came here with like $2,000 in my bank account. And I worked every day to make sure I put everything back into the shop. 
You know, he's passionate about his craft. He eats, sleep, and breathe this. To be able to get a manicure and pedicure, to sit and customize your black barbershop chairs. There was a vision and, and it's still not done yet. So everything I've done, it was a vision for me to say, I can improve this. And that's how I am with my clients, that's how I am with my craft. I always see that I can have and make an improvement. My team is my family. So I wanna make sure that when I hire somebody, everybody's in here, they're making money. They're making enough money to feed their family. I get my blessings from, from, from blessing other people and, and seeing growth in other people. You know, so my team is my family and I do anything to see them grow. John, John is very driven. John, he, he has tough love. He actually, he motivates me. He pushes me. Sometimes he pushes me to the degree where I feel like I'm about to go crazy, but I know that it's tough love and I know he wants the best for everybody. See Titus, take one. I've always been drawn to art. Um, so I feel like barbering uh, somewhat is a, is an art form of craft. Well, I just have to know him. I know his intentions behind everything, and he just wants the best for everybody. I'm learning the business aspects of everything, um, how to treat people as far as customer service, um, how quality takes you far in life, things like that. I, I pride myself in respecting customers and always greeting customers every time they walk in my door, and even when they're leaving out. Okay, have a great day. Once they get that, and once they get out of this chair, getting this Joe Black, I have them walking bow legged out there. They chain they walk. <laughs>
we also do the uh, the music now. So we have a dance contest for the kids, and it, it's man, it is amazing to just to see the kids enjoying themselves without a war, you know. So and and to help them start off the first day of school or the first week of school without worrying about school supplies is it's amazing. Now we are offering the, uh, the Joe Black uh, 360 wave brushes. Uh, we're building this brand with this uh, the Joe Black movement. So it's not just a haircut. You can go anywhere and get a haircut, but you can't go nowhere and get a Joe Black. Come and get a chop, get a Joe Black barbershop. Joe Black, we do the phase, yeah.